Hello, beautiful human. Thanks for clicking on our conversation with KSI. We have a lot to discuss. Boxing, music, life, YouTube, and more. Please. We notice you watch our interviews, but you don't subscribe. If you subscribe, it will allow us to keep going. So please, 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 let us know what you want, too. We'll do it anything for you. Leave it in the comment section, I promise. Uh, hit like on the video. And, yeah, leave your honest feedback in the comment section below. Okay. Enjoy. It's good to see you. Let's do this. How are you? Yo. Yeah, very good, very good. How are you? Dude, living. Uh, it's an honor to speak with you. Thank you for oh, being pleasure's here. On, pleasure's all mine, man. Really? You are, uh, gosh, an icon. Holy shit. What's going an icon. on? icon. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, let's just dive right in. Uh, hello, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That's Nan. Yep. And uh, that is KSI, a.k.a. JJ. What's good? You know, the UK influencer life has fascinated me for a long time. Mm. I, I, I've watched Casper Lee. I've watched Connor Maynard. I've watched you from afar. Yeah. I, I got to give you a lot of credit. You have been doing this for a long time. And yeah. you have really beautifully transitioned from being a comedy rapper. Maybe that's the wrong thing to call you back in 2011, No, 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 no. no. You can, that's pretty, pretty spawn. That's, <laughs> that's the right title? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, yeah. But you've taken that and you've turned it into so much more. <laughs> like, like, like in an exceptional amount of cultural credibility and cachet and chart success to back it up. So, I mean, are you even surprised ever? Uh, I mean, not really. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing this long enough and I kind of knew what I wanted to do. Uh, since 2017 when i you know i took a little break from youtube social media and i kind of had that moment to figure out what i wanted to do in life and what i wanted to become and then i realized my passion is in music and i want to take it seriously so from then on i really just worked on my craft worked on my writing worked on melodies worked on my singing worked on my rapping worked on all these bases to make sure that when I do release an album, you know, whether it's New Age of Randolph or whether it's Dissimulation or whether it's all over the place, my recent one, that it shocks people and makes people go, wow, I didn't expect him, this YouTuber or this boxer or whatever, to be able to release you know, music like this. That's on the radio in the UK all the time now, or, you know, in the US now starting to play on the radio. So, you know, I had a lot of people who, obviously doubted me and were like, nah, nah, this, this whole music thing makes no sense. Like, I just don't, I, I don't get it. And now people are starting to get it, but it took time, man. It's taken what, 10 plus years Yeah. from when I really, you know, started this all, started all of this. So, you know, it's, it's been a process for sure, but it's, I'm, I'm glad now that I'm in, I'm in the driver's seat and I'm able to really dictate what i want now i'm able to really decide what i want to do musically so but, but by the way 14 top 40 singles seven of them ending up on the top 10 and five of them ending up in the top five uh, but but that's really for i mean any musician no matter how mm. they come up that's an extraordinary accomplishment whether it's yeah. busking on the streets or mm. crafting content on youtube but 2017 is when you start taking music seriously uh, why was comedy rap where you went at the beginning of your youtube career like why did you create lamborghini like did you, was that just a, a way to get out there or did you have a want to do that uh well lamborghini i just made the song because i got a lamborghini it was simple as that it was just so <laughs> it was i wasn't thinking oh yeah i want to chart with this i want this to be huge but no i just i bought a lamborghini with my uh fifa coin business that i was doing back in the day uh and then yeah i got enough money to buy a lamborghini so i just bought a lamborghini and i was like i want to rap about it so <laughs> i just did and uh it just blew up you know tremendously i did not expect it and then you know obviously after a while i tried some other tunes i was just doing music for the sake of doing music and trying stuff out 
uh, going through the doing the whole comedy thing, especially before Lamborghini, I was doing a lot of comedy raps. And then I kind of got to a point where I was like, you know what, I kind of, I feel like there's a ceiling with comedy rap. You know, there's only so yeah. far you can go. Whereas with actual music, I was there like, I want to, I want to do that. I want to take it seriously. I want to, you know, rap about what's going on in my life. And I'll, you know, I don't want there to be a comic comedic aspect to it. I want it to be real. I want it to be serious. So, so is that yeah. what it's born out of? Like a, a, a way to communicate your inner feelings, a way to yeah. figure it's, yourself out essentially. Well, it's, 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 it's quite therapeutic. Um, music for me, it's quite therapeutic. Like, you know, with songs like Don't Play, it's about one of my ex, 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 you know, girls that I was seeing and, you know, talking about how we were having so much fun together. We we're having a great time. And all of a sudden she just, just pretty much ghosted me. And I started seeing her go back to her ex. And I was there like, I thought we had a good thing going. And now, you know, you pretty much play with my heart, blah, 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 you know, songs like that. Or Sleeping With The Enemy was a song where I feel like I'm living in a simulation and how my life has just become the thing that it is. And I feel like at some point I don't really have any control. Like everything is just leading to a point. And I, you know, no matter how much I want, I believe I have free will. I'm always still going into a certain direction, etc. Uh, and then there's songs like uh, Madness, where I just rap about how I've got into this position. You know, I've had all these people down me saying, you can never do this, you can never do that. And now it's just me, you know, rapping hard and let everyone know that I'm the man now. And, you know, I've proven everything. You know, you guys told me I can never chart. And I'm always charting. You guys told me I would never make another hit after Lamborghini. And now I just have several in my catalog. So it's just, you know, with all the songs, it's all just kind of things that are person, personal to me. And yeah, everything I rap about or say in my music is is real. It's just, it's well, me. Don't play. That features Anne Marie and Digital Farm Animals. Do you write that yes. song after yeah, you yeah. Realize this uh, this human being in your life has moved on to somebody new? Uh oh yeah yeah this was um after yeah no no this was like years ago yeah yeah years ago. Hmm. Yeah, 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 but like this isn't to do with my con girlfriend now. Wait, wait, so okay, okay. I no, I just want to understand how you craft a record, right? So like, y y like the album came out fairly recently, but mm. a song like "Don't Play," you, you said it is attached to a situation that happened a while ago. So do you sit down and like think about things that happened to you in the past? Like, no, no, right now, literally, like, literally all I do is hear the beat, and the beat opens up things in my mind if that makes sense yeah. or well I, yeah it's kind of weird like how it works like I, for me like my manager sends me beats or I go out asking for certain beats and they play it and it plays on my head and I listen to the beat and make it makes me feel something it open unlocks um corners in my mind that I didn't think I you know I would remember or stuff like that and makes me go oh I want to talk about that yeah and then i go okay that's the main topic and then i you know make a, a chorusy type thing and then i write the verses and then i work on the chorus to make it catchy and you know melodic etc and then i'd go from there and then yeah and then i just make a tune so it's kind of that's i think that's why with all my music it there isn't just like a certain flow that i, I always have it's kind of just it's just random it kind of, it all depends on the beat for me. So, And by the way, like the sonically on the album, it is, it, dude, it's everywhere. I mean, some songs rock and yeah. other songs, you know, go hard in different ways. It's every song is different. Is that um, why the album's titled all over the place? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's partly that. It's also partly because I am all over the place with like YouTube and boxing and music. It's, it, it, it's, it, it's everywhere, you know, on TV as well. Like, if you know about KSI, especially in the UK, you know he's that guy who just does everything. He's able to just do everything. No one knows how. And I think that's why it's going to be quite interesting. Uh, I've got a documentary uh, with Amazon where they literally film my life and what I do. And, you know, if you see my schedule, you understand that it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's true. It, you know, it's truly mad. And, you know, a lot of people would look at that and go, 
there's no way I could do that. How does, you know, KSI, how, how does JJ do that? So it's one of those ones where it's going to be interesting. And I feel like it'll answer a lot of people's questions as well as to every time I go, oh, I work hard, they'll actually get to see what it means to work hard. So. Ugh, beautiful human. People who refuse to use their blinker when driving a car, they stink. But you know what? You don't have to stink. Use your blinker when on the road and wear native. Native is my favorite. Native cares about the products that you put on your body. Beautiful human. They are about stopping the stink the right way. Then th That's the native difference. Y you probably know and have heard me talk about their legendary aluminum-free deodorant. I, I love it. But have you tried their body wash? They got toothpaste. Or have you tried their sunscreen? It's mineral-based. Seriously, Native has brand new SPF 30 sunscreen for your face and body. It is super lightweight, it absorbs really quickly, and you can choose between unscented and coconut and pineapple. I would love a pina colada right now. But Native's on a mission to overhaul your entire hygiene routine by putting care into self-care products, carefully made to work against odor, that are made with simple ingredients that just smell amazing. That was a really uncomfortable chef's kiss. Anyway, try out their deodorant if you haven't already and grab their body wash. They come in amazing scents like coconut and vanilla, citrus and herbal musk, lavender and rose is my favorite, and they got more. Totally worth uh, trying out, I, I promise. And you can build your own personalized bundle too. Mix and match through your favorite scents. Keep them rotating so you can have something for every occasion. Native just gets it. Stay fresh, stay clean with Native by going to nativedo.com slash Zach or use promo code Zach at checkout and you'll get 20% off your first order. That's a big deal. That's nativedeo.com slash Zach, Z-A-C-H or use promo code Zach at checkout for 20% off your first order. Native, I love you. Do you want to be known as a guy who does everything or do you want to be known as somebody who masters something? Um, I kind of want to be the guy who just does whatever he wants, man. It's kind of like, I like being the jack of all trades. I think, I think for me, being able to just master one thing, I just get bored. That's just, that's my, my, my mind. That's how I am mentally. Like I can't just do the same thing over and over and over again. Yes, I can do it and I'll be the best at it, but it won't make me happy. What makes me happy is being able to do something and then go okay i want to do this now okay i want to do this now and then having that freedom people in and by the way i'm going to dive into more of your records because we yeah, 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 listen cool. to the album very heavily like seriously yeah uh, thank you why are people obsessed with your wealth in the uk <laughs> i've never seen another influencer or artist that has like full sections and websites dedicated to understanding how much money you have and how you make money dating back to like Dude, like 2014, 2015, yeah. like, I mean, there's a really detailed record of it. Why? I think it because it's intriguing because, you know, when people go, what is KSI? A lot of people don't really know what to say. You know, I always just say, I'm just an entertainer. Yeah. I've done movies in the past. I've written books. I've you know done music. I've done YouTube. I've done, um, everything really i've kind of just been all over the place and then it's kind of like how much does someone like that earn you know is it profitable to be able to do all those things and the answer is yes obviously like it's extremely profitable but you know a lot of times I, like for me i don't really do things for the money i kind of just do things because i i want to do things and money just comes like it's it's it actually that's just how it's been like that's how my whole life has been i've kind of just done what i enjoy and all of a sudden people are just throwing money at me because you know people are watching and there's views and there's attention etc and what fulfills you though is it like is there a certain art form that like like just makes you feel whole or as close to whole as one could feel or is it the thought and the act of mastering a bunch of different things like what 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 fulfills you i think there's just a few things that fulfill me so like for instance for music you know being able to write a song you know from scratch you know all i'm all i am is hearing the beat or even hearing silence and then watching the beat being made the way i want it 
and then creating a verse, writing verses, working on the chorus, blah, 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 and creating a piece from nothing, from absolute silence, to creating this bit of art for like three, four minutes, and then being able to perform as well. Those things are dope. Like, charting wise, it's cool. That's, you know, for me, charting was just, you know, it was important to show and establish everyone that I am serious about this. And then I, you know, I'm a force to be reckoned with. I'm not just this guy who's trying to do music. No, I can make bangers and I know I can make bangers. But like for me, Chime was, hasn't, it wasn't always the main thing for me. It's always just about creating a piece of art and then being able to perform it. And that is what has driven me a lot of the time. But then even with boxing, it's being able to go against the odds. You know, with every fight I've had, I've always been the underdog. No one really thinks I'm going to be able to win. And then I win. And that that right there is fulfillment. Same with YouTube, you know, just being able to release content and make people's day all the time and just think of new ideas and just having fun with it. That fulfills me. And, you know, especially my previous videos, I'd say nowadays I, I'm a lot more chilled. Like I kind of just react to stuff and it's just whatever. I kind of just let my audience do the work for me and I just react to blah, blah, blah. But back in the day, I was just crazy with it. I was like so in depth with the ideas, just trying to create so many, you know, moments in the YouTube history uh, world, etc. And I was just having fun with it. Whereas, you know, now I'm just like, okay, I want to work on something else and I want to work on something else, but I still don't want to just ne neglect those things. I still want to find a way to make it work so I can just make content and you know, make it you know, make it or do things that I enjoy doing, et cetera. So. You're so fascinating because you really uh, do everything and you've done a lot of history. And, you know, I, I've been doing this a long time, so I've watched you. Just curious, yeah. Did you have friends growing up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had friends. Um, I you mean, I, I listen to you. I, well, it's, it's kind of weird. Like I had friends where I was a bit of a loner, but I'd say, um, especially like previous school, I had friends, but, you know, I, the only friend now that I has come from school is Simon and he's kind of helped me through YouTube and he's kind of got me um you know he helped me quite a lot and now he's in the Sidemen which is a group of seven including me where we all just make YouTube videos we're adding YouTube videos every week um uh and then on one channel and a few other uh videos on another channel another channel where we have more videos and then we have side plus as well which is like a membership subscription where we post more videos there and bts so you got my mind doing all of that and then i've got the music thing as well so i'm doing all of this but um yeah no like friendship wise i'd say simon was definitely my um main guy especially from school and then a lot of my friends i just knew through youtube and through online twitter and i've kind of just had friendship through that it's been quite weird because obviously i'm knowing people but in my own room and it's like i'm not meeting them face to face but i know them and then eventually we'd meet to get you know meet up and would do stuff together and now you know i've got a, a group of friends in just different areas you know with the music boxing uh youtube etc so number two it features feature in 21 savage great yes. record um what is it like getting those two uh, on a song or even hearing th those features for the first time because i'm assuming they sent them to you right you weren't in the room. yeah 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 so we went so obviously this is all during the pandemic so i wasn't able to get in the studio and um it's a shame because i feel like i've missed out on a lot of things not being able to be in the studio with a lot of these eyes but you know I, i've made it work anyway but uh yeah obviously it was it, you know, with getting this getting a feature from future and 21 savage it's it's not always going to be the easiest thing they you know they've got their own thing going on so you know i had to kind of work around them but uh they both smashed it with the verses and yeah like create a hit for me anyway like i really enjoy uh, number two and i i'm always listening to that tune but uh yeah it's it's one of the songs where again it was just me showing everyone that you know I am, <laughs> I'm the guy, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm flying, I'm smashing it right now. And a lot of you, you know, didn't think, uh, didn't think I'd get into this position and now what? So yeah. Is, do you have a lot of confidence going into like 
when you're making a track with someone like 21 Savage or Lil Wayne, or is it still kind of an intimidating working with these big name artists? Nah, nah, it's not intimidating at all, man. Like, I think because I've been in a world where I've been with people who have been big on YouTube and all of this and that, it's kind of just, I just apply that to music and all these other industries that I'm in. So I don't really like, I think maybe I get maybe a little starstruck when I do meet, you know, certain people, but most of the time, like, I know what I'm capable of and I know what I need to do. And then I just do it. That's it. Whenever there's a task or whenever I've been forced to swim, been pushed into the deep end and forced to swim, I make sure I always swim every single time. So. Hell yeah. I, but you know, like Lil Wayne's an icon, right? Like yeah, you yeah. have a music career like Lil Wayne. Uh, I, I mean, whole, you know, yeah. God, what do yeah. you think of an icon in that game? I mean, he's probably top five, right? I would think. Could be. Yeah. Top yeah. yeah. Could be top yeah, for sure, man. Especially Legit. Modern day. So, I mean, it, obviously you know going in that you have an audience that he wants right you are you have the uk in the palm of your hand correct yeah yeah, yeah. so nervous is the wrong thing but like do you pick anything up from working with somebody like that from doing a record that he is on what do you learn from creating which by the way loose is a great record mm. lose l-o-s-e sorry yeah <laughs> um what do i learn um well, I, I learned that uh, his verse was insane. <laughs> but uh, no, I kind of, what I learned is, again, how versatile he was able to be uh, on a song like that. You know, I could have sent him the song and he could have gone, nah, that ain't me. I can't do anything like that. But he tackled it and he smashed it. So I think for me, it's just being able to, um, you know, being able to be versatile was a huge part of this album for me and uh i think that it showed to me that i am capable of really hopping on anything that i really want to even if it's hardcore rock like there's songs yeah. that haven't been released that were like hardcore rock uh with young blood uh i know they just got shelved but like you know it shows i i'm able to be versatile i'm able to try different things and it work out so now it's kind of just like, all right, let me just do what I want now. Let me just, uh, yeah, see where I want to go with my next album. Do I want to do? Do I want it to be a more conceptual album where I'm a lot more personal again, similar to like Dissimulation, or do I want to make an album full of just hits, or do I want to do both? Release two albums full of just hits, and another album full of just conceptual parts of my life, uh, and just release both in the same year i don't know it's kind of i'm kind of like in the driver's seat but uh yeah it's uh exciting times right now you know i'm busy as hell i've just got uh you know tour i've got obviously a lot of the youtube stuff and i'm still training so yeah i've kind of got a lot going on and i haven't really had time to really get into the studio but so eventually do when i can do you capture idea no you don't capture ideas as you go you when it's time to write you just set aside time and you listen yeah yeah simple yeah. and i just listen to the beat and then it just happens yeah it just unlocks things so i i have a terrible memory but music unlocks it it's yeah. weird i don't know how it works but like it just it makes me remember things that i was like oh wow i totally forgot about that but that's a major part of my life i want to make sure i can write about and you know talk about document so, uh, hey beautiful human Hello, beautiful human. I'm hitting pause real quick to tell you that you should work out, you stress, and get back to feeling great at Planet Fitness. Why not? Join the judgment-free zone today for just $10 a month and get tons of cardio and strength equipment in the spacious, clean clubs. Plus, you get free fitness training, hello, and plenty of room to move. Plus, you can go at your own pace and just get back to a routine that works for you. All for just $10 a month. Plus, check out the crowd meter in the free Planet Fitness app so you can find out the best time to visit. Don't wait. Join any of the 2,000 plus Planet Fitness locations today. You can join in club, online, or on their app. See club for details. Do you think people are starting to see you as a rapper now and not a YouTube rapper? And does that label bother you at all? Um, No, that label doesn't bother me at all. Like, if people want to call me a pilot, they can call me a pilot. Like, I don't really care. You know, 
numbers talk, innit? At the end of the day, like if I provide you with the evidence that I am meant to be in this position, you can't com- you can't complain about that. You can't say, oh, blah, 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 or oh, no, no, no. It's it's facts. You know, the numbers are facts. And that's what, you know, with this album, I wanted to show I can make bangers, I can make hits. You know, these are the facts. Now it's like, cool. Now I can do whatever I want. Now I've proven to the haters and the, the people who are, you know, um, doubting that I can do, uh, I can do what you say I can't do. So now it's kind of just like, yeah, I'm just having fun and just doing me now. So, so yeah. that's what it was about for you. Just proving people wrong. Oh yeah, bro. That is, oh, that's been my driving factor, you know, legacy and proving people wrong, man. Like I love proving people wrong. Why do people doubt you though? I think because of like maybe where, where I've come up from, or I don't know, just because I've come from this whole YouTube world and a lot of people see YouTubers as this group of people who just have had life easy. They've kind of just, you know, they haven't really worked. They've kind of just turned on the camera, said a few things, posted it and just got millions of views. And they just think it's just that easy. And obviously I always go, well, you try it. And then they try it and they fail and flop on their face and they realize how hard it is. But, you know, it's kind of then just when I wanted to venture into mu- uh, music and venture into boxing and all this and that, they're always just like, oh, you can't, you can't do it. You can't do it. And, you know, for me, it's just proving people wrong has always been my driving factor. And I think, you know, I still feel like to this day, I want to try and prove people wrong uh, with certain other things. Uh, I mean, I know there's just always something. And, you know, there's, there's definitely parts where I have proven people wrong and I have, you know, accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. But yeah, I'm just thought why you though, like even the YouTube su- success early on, like, it, you know, it, it could have a lot of people were uploading videos, you know, the algorithm, like everything lined up kind of, but not really consistency mm. probably had a lot to do with it. Yeah, I'm I, I'm competitive. I'm a guy that I, you know, I look at someone, and I go, oh, I can do what you do better. Obviously, you know, to a certain level. Um, <laughs> I can't look at Canelo and go, yeah, I can box better than you. Like, obviously, he's, he's, <laughs> one of the greats but uh i think for me it's like i i you know i look and i go all right maybe i might not be able to do it as well as you but i can give it a go you know and i'll try as hard as possible and you know i i think for me i i try hard on things i really like when i'm focused on something i'm going to make it happen whether it's the messiest or the ugliest or the looks of the best or whatever like i'm gonna make it happen i'm gonna make it work so yeah now you mentioned you're still training are you training for something in specific or are you just staying in shape in case something comes up uh i mean there's things in the works and there's things that we want to do but uh again it's just right now it's just maintaining because yeah because right now the music is just is flying man and there's definitely certain people i want to fight but i just don't have the time uh, obviously with tour and all this, I, cause I try, I tried it before where I did a tour and then I fought Logan with the second fight and it was just not a good idea. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I felt like I kind of exposed myself a little bit and I didn't give myself enough time to really train for a fight because with a fight, you need to dedicate two, three, four months, uh, to be able to get into camp and work hard into being someone. Whereas I kind of just was on tour and then came off that and I went, okay, let me go Vegas real quick, train for a few weeks and then fight Logan Paul. And it's like, that wasn't the way to do it. And by the way, I like, worked, but... a tour is physically demanding as well in its own yeah. way, you know? If yeah, you, exactly. If you do it, it's it's hard. Uh, the this, this song, You, who are you singing to? Oh, it's my girlfriend. Yeah. It's... Are you thinking about her when you're writing it? Are you thinking about her in the booth? Uh, yeah. When I write, it's just that's what I think about. It. Yeah, like I, when I hear the song, uh, when I heard the beat, I was just like, yeah, like it just makes me think about my girlfriend. Yeah. What is it like sharing that song with her? Uh, yeah. It, I remember I uh, I played the song to her. Like she was right next to me when I played it, and she started crying. 
is 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 it was quite beautiful. Like she was just like, this is one of the most beautiful things you know anyone's ever done for me. And I was just like, damn, uh, stop crying, please. <laughs> it's getting awkward, no, nah, no. Nah. But I was just like, yeah, it's, I, it's like she meant she meant a lot to me. So I in thought, that like, moment, do you realize the power of music? Because it is like, the, oh yeah, the power. Yeah, it's great, bro. Like you can wake up and listen to certain music and it could just shape shape your day yeah. like you can listen to angry you know hard, or hard rock music and it can just shape the whole of your day you know you could feel i don't know you can have this energy this angry energy or you can listen to jazz peaceful music and you know you can have being the zen it's crazy how much music can really like change your mood and make you feel a certain way Totally triggers different emotions and memories. I mean, yeah, even with like Drake songs, all of a sudden you're like thinking of your ex. You're like, oh damn, <laughs> yeah. Late at night, like damn, I miss, I miss her, and all this and that. I miss you. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's pow- it's powerful music. Have there been any artists that you've reached out to recently that like turned you down, or do a lot of people want uh, to work with you these days? Obviously, yeah, but I can't say. I can't say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously, but like obviously, those people now regret it hugely yeah hugely and it's so funny when they try to hit you back up being like oh let's try and make something work but yeah it is what it is like now i'll decide when i want to work with you rather than uh me going to you going oh please can we work on this or can we do something together etc so and you're not calling them out keeps it clean and uh... oh no yeah yeah like there's there's a lot of bull that happens behind the scenes with music or any industry mm-hmm. but uh, i try to keep it you know quite civil i feel i feel like there's you gotta have some some class you can't just you know every single person because you don't know what they're going through as well you don't know what their mindset is but obviously if they want to come at me you know full guns blazing then i'll go as well you know what i mean but uh most of the time yeah i i tend to uh be quite civil you mentioned that you were uh, getting a lot of radio play in the UK and then some here in the US. Have you found it difficult to break into the US market in music? And I, and you, YouTube, obviously, you have success all over the world, but have you found it more difficult to gain a bigger American audience? I think it's hard for any British uh, musician to break into America. I mean, there's very few that have been able to. Robbie Williams, um, Ed Sheeran, Adele, what's the difference with all these people and me, you know, I rap, these guys sing. <laughs> so, you know, what rapper do you know from the UK that's smashing it in America? In a minute. Uh, point. Who is, who is the last one? Lil something? No. Uh, I mean, Tiny, so, Temper. Tiny Temper. So how many years ago was that, bro? Uh, like, like on the show in 2015. No, but, but like, it, it just shows like the difference. And, yeah. He wasn't, he was only able to really scrape it. He wasn't able to really like smash it hard and bring it home like Ed Sheeran and Adele and all this and that. So it's not easy. And, you know, I feel like I'm in a position where I can maybe do it. And yeah, it's it's gonna be hard. Best believe like, first of all, it was hard making it in the UK, but now that, you know, I'm a big fish in that pond it's now trying to be a big fish in america and it's going to take time and it's just try again trying to figure out what will work what doesn't etc and work with american artists and you know i'm happy to work with american artists i've always been happy to work with american artists from the simulation uh where you know with like offset trippy red etc and then obviously all over the place uh lil wayne and uh future 21 savage yeah you, oh, well, you're 21. getting the right collaborations and the songs work so i mean you're you're, you're definitely you're, you're you're down the right path and you're doing the yeah. right stuff but to your point it's really i mean god how many how many artists come here and try to do it and it like to your point like it doesn't hit the way it should little mix is one of them that stands out to me like in a way that like god i love them i'm upset yeah but and again I, uh, singing yeah, of course. Of yeah, course. so it's hard to find a rapper. Yeah, so I think for, I think for me as well, um, what gives me the edge is my social presence. Yeah, um, I know a lot of musicians or rappers in the UK just don't believe in social media or just don't. I know they feel like it's outside their comfort zone and they don't understand how important it is to market yourself. 
people, a lot of musicians think, okay, let me just make the music and that should be good enough. But we live in 20, you know, a different era. It's 2021, man. Like it's the year of the social media. It's the year of where you have to do more than just release music. You have to promote yourself. Look at uh, Lil Nas X, perfect example of someone who knows how to captivate an audience with social media and really put himself out there. And he smashed it because of it. Totally. And you know, it is, I, I can't speak totally to this as I am not a hip hop historian, but there is a lot of history that is around rap music. There's so much history that exists around the genre here in the States. It well, is- yeah. And also, I, I, I don't know if this is the point you're trying to make, but uh, because of the accent, uh, especially the UK accent, you know, a lot of Americans go, ah, this is not real rap. And they just dismiss it because of how it sounds, etc. But I think over time it's slowly shifting and the more the more we keep knocking at the door, knocking at the door, knocking at America's door with, you know, us, I guess, evolving and improving. And, you know, it's such a shame, rest in peace to Pop Smoke. But he was one of the people, you know, yeah, same with Drake, who's kind of just trying to open that door for all the UK eyes to be able to venture into America and really um you know show americans the uk sound totally so. and, and by the way i i i think you're right on the accent and to me i also think that like people want they want real rap to be real you know yeah, yeah. And, and again i'm not a gatekeeper of that genre but i can mm. say enough that like people hold the stories that are told in those songs mm. to a very high standard mm. and if you're gonna be amongst the greats they want to know that the stories you're telling are real. And again, like yeah. I'm not a gatekeeper in that world. I don't know. I just yeah. know from what I see um, and, and hear. And am I right? Wrong? Well, yeah. I mean, there's people like Stormzy and Skepta, which are, I mean, they're massive in the UK. Their music's great, yeah. but you know, it's very similar. It's like they're, they haven't blown up in America like they have in other places. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's one of those things that it just takes time. It just yeah. takes time. And, uh, you know, it's whether they have it in them to keep going. And uh, I definitely know I have. I definitely know I have, and it's just being consistent and just keep, you know, keep pushing, breaking through, and then eventually you'll get it. By the way, that I think is the advice for anybody out there hanging out with us right now, watching, mm. you're doing anything in life, whether it's creating content or uh, walking down a path to achieve another dream, is consistency mm. and don't stop because a lot of people fail because they get discouraged and they stop. But yes. the reality is that next shot could have been the shot. You know, yep. you don't know what shot is going to be it. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, like, you know, I've released a song with Lil Wayne, Lose. Mm. That doesn't mean I'm done. Yeah. doesn't mean I'm finished. Yeah, no, no, no. It's just the start. You know, I've finally scratched the surface. So, you know, I've got that hunger to keep going and push it more. So yeah. All Over the Place, by the way, is uh, the album. And there's a link in the description below if you want to listen to it. Uh, you brought up, like, marketing and social media, having a presence, mm. which not all people are, like, comfortable with. Do you think that's what makes Jake such, like, a polarizing figure in boxing world? 100%. Understand. He knows how to play it like a fiddle, man. And that's just the YouTube background. Whether he likes it or not, YouTube has been a huge factor for him being in the position he's in today. And, uh, you know, there's, it, there's, it's no, it's no mistake that you've got people like Logan Paul and um, Jake Paul and me, et cetera, all smashing it in our fields because it's just the YouTuber mindset keep going, keep going, keep going. It's never you release content and you get to relax. It's you release content. All right, what's next? All right, what's next? And that's always just been, you know, what I guess has got us into the position we're in today. Well, as an all around entertainer, if you were to fight Jake one day, would you want to do that? Because like Jake's a good opponent or is that because you're like, no, no, legacy on the best show. What was that? No, just legacy, legacy. It'd be finally shot that mother up, bro. Yeah, 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 bro. Facts. Because it's I'm sick and tired of just hearing this guy win his fights, blah, blah, blah. I, it's so annoying. My brother had the chance to end it all with him. And even I wanted to pick him up at the time before Logan Paul because I wanted Logan Paul to be the final one. But now it's switched. And, uh, you know, I guess my, my career and my music has just popped off and everything has kind of happened. And it's kind of put me on a back burner with the boxing and I've definitely felt like I've missed out, but it's kind of one of those things where, you know, I can't just go, all right, guys, I'm going to cancel all the tours. 
you guys paid mm. all this money you know i can't just people over i can't i've got to make it work when i you know i gotta make it work when it can work for me if that makes sense there's, also there's when no it point in me you rushing in you know you'll be in a, like god i want to see him get his ass kicked well yeah yeah bro like i know i can beat that i can uh, bro i know i can beat him i know i can beat, and the thing is like a lot of people are just fearful of him and a lot of people think i'm afraid bro did you see how i looked when i was fighting logan paul was there any fear you know, in my eyes, it, bro, I was willing to die there. I got knocked down, bro, with a clean uppercut and I still got, got up and I was like, yo, let's go. And then I continued. So for me to then go, oh, okay, um, let me then fight Jake Paul. Oh, man, I'm not sure. Oh, it's just not the right mindset. And again, like I said, I had a tour beforehand and I went straight into fighting Logan. So Make you think, it make sense. You think Jake would be a tougher opponent than Logan, or is Logan tougher than Jake? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it'd be easier for me. Because Logan was taller, and he had an awkward... Um, he was quite awkward with his um, um, boxing technique. You know, it's like... It, it's uh, He was a bit more of a slappy type of person, but he also had limbs, and he'd use his jab to really, like, push you, you know, keep you on the edge... Or not keep you on end, keep you at the end of his punch. I wasn't able to really get in. I had to like really like just get scrappy with him in order for me to get a punch. I know everyone was just like, oh, I'm windmilling and all this and that, but it's because it was hard for me to get in. Whereas with Jake, you know, was similar size, it's it'll be like me fighting Joe Weller. You know, I, I don't have to really like work to you know get into inside to punch him blah 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 all i needed to do or i need to do with jake is just i don't want to say too much but move a certain way and i can able and i'm able to you know counter his counter i need this to happen i mean it will be I, it will it will it will but it's just yeah i mean i i guess i need people to stop listening to my music <laughs> I, I, yeah. do it when you're ready because when you're ready yeah yeah you yeah you win but also i feel like you are genuinely as i get to know you and i've gotten to know you through listening to your music and re understanding your story i feel like you are genuinely the opposite of what jake paul is and i like logan paul yeah. he's been a friend of the show for many 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 moves yeah yeah but you know i feel like your disdain for uh jake is genuine and uh yeah, he's you know, please, please. Well, yeah, no, soon, soon come, soon come, man. When it's, it's right. uh, yeah, yeah, when it will, it will. But what was your initial reaction when you heard Logan say you hit harder than Mayweather? Uh, I knew, I knew, I, I know I hit hard. Yeah, come on, man. I've, I've been told this several times. Like, I, don't, I maybe it's the Nigerian bones in me or something like that. But yeah, I know I hit hard. Like, and the thing is, I don't even have good technique. Like, I'm like, um, what's his name? Um. Ah, oh, who fought Tyson Fury? Um, Hold on. Oh, how I? I just watch, hoping to see somebody. How I not? How I, how's his name slipped my mind? Um, uh, black guy. Oh, no, I need to figure this out now. Uh, so... By the way, while you do that, everybody listen to all over the place. Link in the description below. Deontay um... Wilder. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so like it's I'm like similar to Deontay Wilder. I mean, maybe he's got a bit better technique than I say. Bit he's he has better technique uh, from what people have seen anyway. Um, with you know how he punches as well, it's like dynamite. And I know that's why Logan didn't want to stand with me. That's why Logan was moving because he got hit. Like it, it wasn't even a great hit, and he was like, "Hell, this sucks." So I, you know, I know I have power and I know if I hit Jake with one of my whites, especially with my technique, bro, it's night, night, fam. It's night, night. I know I always have that in the back pocket, but it's right now it's like, again, because of the music, because of everything, YouTube, whatever, everything's happening. And I just haven't been able to really focus on the boxing. It's always just been like this thing on the side that I haven't been able to work on. And I think with the first the first time I was able to really go 100% with boxing was against Joe Weller. This was the very first fight that I had. And you could even see in my physique, I was ripped, shredded. And, you know, I was ready for the fight. And, but I could have gone 10 rounds with Joe. But instead, I TKO'd him in the third round. And that was the last time I was able to really dedicate 
time into boxing. Whereas, you know, since then, it's always been you know, a side amazing. thing, a side thing, a side thing. That's, you know what? It, it's, it's really wild to see you one yeah. do boxing in a very legitimate way. And then also to conquer music this way. I got to give you a lot yeah. of credit. No, I appreciate okay. it, man. All over the place was in it, number one uh, on the UK album charts. Link in the description below. My favorite song off the record is Patience. It has Youngblood and Polo G on it. I, yeah. Just uh, speaking, you didn't ask, but I really think there's a lane in the alternative hip hop space where you merge rock and hip hop together. And I don't think people are doing that in a big, real way consistently. And God, the yeah. record that fucking rocked on your album, in my opinion, it's yeah. out to me really rocked. It was. Yeah. Uh, thank you, man. I think I think for me, like I already know there's there's you know that part uh that could be done more, especially in the whole industry. That hasn't really been like looked into. But I another know. one that I know is booming is Afro Afrobeat type songs. You know, people like Wizkid and all of that, all those type of um songs are really starting to make uh waves. And uh yeah, I think that's definitely something that I, I know I want to venture into. Uh, I've definitely been approached several times, but again, I just haven't had the time, bro. <laughs> but, you're under, but you're understanding the cultural trends, right? In your culture. Yeah, yeah, I know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I fully understand. Yeah. You have to, you have to be on top of all of it to uh, yeah. be in the position I'm in. So. The biggest DJs in the world are listening to kids who make beats in their basements in Brazil. You know what exactly. I mean? Like yeah. They're yeah. A bit beyond we can even wrap our minds around, you know, and they have been for free. Tiesto, Diplo, you know, like mm -hmm. God, calling sounds for years. Uh, yeah. KSI, JJ, I really appreciate your time today, man. No, thank you, man. Uh, really, thank you for hanging out. Final thought, you good? Oh, when's the Amazon documentary coming out? I'm excited to see all the behind the scenes stuff. Um, I believe it's going to come out sometime next year, okay. like probably end of next year. So okay. it's, yeah, it's, it's a while away. <laughs> 2022 but uh please listen to all over the place it's a great album totally worth your ear and whenever you're in the states man please come and hang out on our couch right? yeah soon bro soon just need this pandemic to f off <laughs> Same with that. are you vaccinated uh only one i only got one second shots on uh, the way though right? soon yeah yeah literally uh i think next week so Hell yeah, Mazel Tov. congratulations yeah. <laughs> appreciate it you have a great day man it was really you nice too. talking to you Take care, guys. Hey, peace and love, everybody. See hey, beautiful human. Thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot. So we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore, so we just gave you the highlights. Please subscribe and uh, notifications and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.